Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education. I am your narrator, Frank Avella. In this presentation, we will cover Eric Erickson's eight stages of psychosocial development. His work offered a vast framework to view development over a lifespan. During each stage, people face a developmental conflict that must be resolved in order to acquire that stage's virtue, as we'll explore. Now, we're going to begin with an overview. His theory of psychosocial development describes eight stages that a healthy individual encounters from childhood through adulthood. Erickson's research on the eight stages became widely recognized after the publication of his book entitled Childhood and Society, and it deals with the relationship between childhood training and cultural accomplishment. Erickson was immensely influenced by psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. His work combines Freudian methodology with cultural anthropology. Organized activities such as sports and teamwork experience are seen today as a way to help children advance through the developmental stages of their lives. As individuals advance through each of the eight stages, they must encounter a psychosocial crisis. And if the individual is able to reconcile that conflict, they will emerge from the stage with a corresponding virtue. Next, we're going to look at Eric Erickson, the person. Erickson's father left his mother before he was born. His mother remarried a Jewish pediatrician who officially adopted Eric as his child. Eric started as an artist and eventually landed a job as an art teacher. He worked well with children and began getting hired as a tutor. Eric married artist and dancer Joan Erickson. They had four children together. Joan was a main collaborator in his eight stages of psychosocial development. Erickson focused his life's work on personality theory. He is also credited with coining the phrase identity crisis. Amazingly, although Erickson had achieved much success and is renowned in the fields of academia, he never earned a bachelor's degree. He did earn two certificates from the Montessori Teachers Association. Now, right now I want to take a quick break and ask that you please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to like and share this video. And you can get a PowerPoint presentation from a link in the description below. Now, let's get back to this presentation. Stage 1 has the ultimate outcome virtue of hope. In this stage, children go through a psychosocial crisis of trust versus mistrust and their personality is first developed. This stage occurs for newborn babies up to one year old, 18 months. The mother is their significant relationship in the child's life. The child's interaction with the mother determines their level of trust. The stage's existential question is, can I trust the world? If the child has parents who satisfy their needs, they learn trust in others. If a child is neglected, they will learn that the world is dangerous and unpredictable, thus mistrust. Providing a secure environment is needed. Parents must respond quickly to an infant's cries, leading to trust, and the acquisition of the virtue hope. Next up is stage two, with an outcome virtue of will. The psychosocial crisis in, state, in this stage is autonomy versus shame and doubt. The stages occur in children 18 months to about three years. Here, children develop a sense of self-control. Both parents share a significant role in that they must be there as a security blanket in allowing the children to explore at their own will. In this stage, children ask the question, is it okay to be me? Children develop their own interests, perhaps insects or dancing. They begin to develop independence. Important tasks for children at this stage include potty training, getting dressed, washing hands. If children are not allowed to complete tasks by themselves, they'll develop shame and doubt about their ability to handle problems. Autonomy will lead to will, the will to do it on their own. Stage three, the virtue of purpose. The psychosocial crisis in this stage is initiative versus guilt. Children in stage three are between three and six years of age. During this time of their lives, children must be able to make judgments. The question looms, is it okay for me to do, to move, to act? Children will begin to take on projects. With the support of parents and teachers, children will develop initiative to take on tasks. If adults discourage independent activities, children will feel guilty about their desires. In this stage, life events that take place include bike riding, creating drawings, exploring their surroundings. 
At the end of this stage, a child wants to complete their activities for a reason, for a purpose. They should be granted a level of freedom and encouragement to play. Continuing, we come to stage four. The virtue of this stage is competence. Here, children encounter the psychosocial crisis of industry versus inferiority. Children in this stage are approximately 6 to 12 years of age. Children are required to learn new skills or feel inferior for their lack of success. Many of the significant relationships of the child's life take place at school. This stage focuses on socio-emotional factors that influence a child's life. The child asks the question, can I make it in this world of people and things? Children notice individual differences in other cultures in school. The children are recognized for success in schoolwork, sports, activities, and this praise leads them to work harder, take risks, and further accomplishment. Ridicule for poor performance will lead to inferiority feelings and lack of motivation. Moving forward, we come to stage five, fidelity. At this stage, children go through the psychosocial crisis of identity versus role confusion. This stage usually takes place when children are between 12 and 18 years of age. Children at this age care about how they appear to others. Significant relationships at this age include peer friends and role models. Children settle on a school identity. Then they ask the question of, who am I? What can I be? Children may affiliate with different groups, religions, politics, etc., all in an effort to establish their identity. Important life events center on social relationships. Many teenagers drift from one relationship to the next. They want to make their mark on society. Successful identity formation in children helps develop fidelity and the ability to relate to others in a general manner. Role confusion leads to low self-esteem. Stage six is the virtue of love. In this stage, the psychosocial crisis is intimacy versus isolation. Individuals are anywhere between 20 and 40 years old during this stage. People are ready to make serious commitments at this time. The significant relationships in this stage are life partners and very close friends. The existential question is, can I love? People think to themselves, am I ready to make long lasting commitments to another person? Many individuals do form intimate and caring relationships. Romantic relationships are the key events of this stage. People that don't form these relationships, mostly due to lack of sacrifice, will not achieve the virtue of love. The ability to reciprocate is necessary for any relationships. Others are simply afraid of rejection and in intimate relationships and therefore never achieve love. Continuing, we now have stage 7, and it's the virtue of caring. Psychosocial crisis at this stage is generativity versus stagnation. Generativity refers to the concern for the next generation and making your mark on society. The age range is from 45 to 65 years old, basically middle adulthood. The major relationships at this stage are household relationships, kids, family, etc., and workplace friends. People in this stage should want to mentor and guide youngsters. At this stage, we ponder the question, how can I make my life count? The primary task of middle age is to find ways to meaningfully contribute to society. Work and parenthood are the major life events. Parenthood's task is to help children grow up to be responsible adults. A self-centered person, selfish people who are unwilling to help society develop feelings of stagnation and never achieve care. On to the last stage, which is wisdom. The psychosocial crisis is ego integrity versus despair. This is the stage for senior citizens, individuals over the age of 65. Many people are retired by this point and slow down their lives. People begin to contemplate not only their personal accomplishments, but the accomplishments of all mankind. People are retrospective, yet still developing. The existential question posed, is it okay to have been me? Notice it's in the past tense. People with integrity near the ends of their lives are more at peace about death. They achieve wisdom. Major life events are simply reflecting on your own life. If a person doesn't have any accomplishments, they live the rest of their lives in despair. If they are successful, 
Those who have achieved success develop integrity and wisdom and look back on their lives with fulfillment and joy. And now on to the ninth stage, which was added by Joan Erickson in the Life Cycle Completed Extended Version. This ninth stage was published after her husband's death. This stage takes place when a person is in their 80s and 90s. Old age really has a negative impact on a person's life. In this stage, older adults revisit the previous eight stages in reverse order of crisis. For example, stage one's crisis was trust versus mistrust, but when a person is in their 90s, they're forced to mistrust their own abilities as their body deteriorates. In stage two, now a person experiences shame as they lose bodily control. The reversal occurs for the rest of the stages as well. It can be a sad thing. But before we finish, let's discuss some of the criticism of Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. Major criticism being that the mechanisms for resolving conflict and moving from one stage to the next is not clearly defined. Critics claim it to be too vague. Another criticism of Erickson is that most of his work applies mainly to boys. Others claim that the theory is too focused on childhood. Stages 1 through 5 all occur within the first 20 years of a person's life. This theory also focuses too much on social expectations found in certain cultures. Also, Erickson focuses too much on the stages, where it's assumed that completion of one stage is a prerequisite for the next cycle social crisis. Not everyone agrees on that. Anyway, right now I want to thank you for your time. I want to ask that you please subscribe to this channel. Check the description below for links to a PowerPoint presentation and other resources. And don't forget to like and share this video. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to creating another video.